Welcome back to Omni Flash. My name's Omni Flash, and today we will tell you how Talion works. This is part two of the series How Talion Works. So if you haven't watched the first part, you can look in the description below. It'll be in the first comment below. Watch that in order to get your character up to around level 50. So that you need to get a level 50 before you have uh, all your skills available. Once you have all your skills available, you'll be able to feel out whether or not you like that character. Then, you will want to make some subs. You want to make some alt characters. Having some alt characters will boost your main character so much that it is unrealistic. Now, the reason why we're watching Ultraman right here is because Ultraman is the event that is going on right now hopefully the Ultraman event is still going on when you're watching this video if it's not then there will be a different event and you will follow that event to make your subs stronger now a lot of people have asked me what is Ultraman what the hell is Ultraman and Ultraman was created in the 1960s by the same creator of Godzilla and we all know and love Godzilla, but we don't know what an Ultraman is. The reason is because the creator of Ultraman and another company are fighting over the international distri distribution rights. And that has prevented Ultraman from coming mainstream in the West. The biggest example would be in Ready Player One, Steven Spielberg wanted to have Ultraman fight Mecha Godzilla. Ready Player One, everyone knows about that. Now, in the book that it was based off of, it was Ultraman versus Godzilla. And it would have been awesome, but they went ahead and went with the Iron Giant, which turned out really good as well. There is good news though. Apparently the courts have sided with the creators of Ultraman, and now they can release Ultraman to the rest of the world. So, we do have the Netflix version of Ultraman, the 13 episode series, a second season of Ultraman uh, for Netflix anime is scheduled for next year. I would give the first season of Ultraman a 7 out of 10. I didn't like the main character's personality. I love One Punch Man. I think One Punch Man's main character is amazing. I'd give him a 10 out of 10. Heading back to Talion, the reason we're making subs is for the unlimited potions, the unlimited pet and mount shards. There's also unlimited jewels, there's unlimited resources of all types that you can get when you make these uh, alts or subs, whatever you want to call them. The reason, the reason that making subs and alts work is because there is a warehouse that you can transfer uh, all of your materials over to your main once you hit level 30 that warehouse will open I would recommend that you make all three other characters as soon as you can so that they can take advantage of this Ultraman event because Ultraman event starts at level 15 so once you get into level 15 just do the last event dungeon five times every day it gives incredible amount of resources plus you can get Ultraman uh, you can do the Ultraman event on there you can get extra ace suit shards uh, doing the Ultraman event you can get all of your alts the Ultraman ace costume now you don't want to neglect your main you still want to do everything you can on your main just do those five event dungeons on your alts also, your next step would be to get them to level 30 so that they can actually move over all of the potions, all of their uh, shards over to the main. Now, if there is no Ultra Man event, then you would want to get all your alts to level 30. And that may be kind of difficult. It does take about 6 hours to get to level 30, maybe 7 or 8, depending on how quickly you, you do uh, these uh, quests. As you play with your alts, you may realize that you really like playing that class. So your alt may actually become your main. So it's important to make these alts when you're about level 
50 or 60. This way you can catch up if you decide to change classes. Now your main becomes an alt that farms for your new main and uh, that works out really well since your main was higher level and you can farm better quality mats for them. One thing that I realized as I was creating all three of my mains is that it takes a lot of time. Sometimes it takes too much time. So I don't want you to stress yourself too much when you are actually playing all three alts. Now you don't have to, but just go ahead and do the Ultraman, the five Ultraman event dungeons if, uh, if you don't have time to do anything else. Don't stress yourself out. Don't burn yourself out. Uh, because you still want to focus on your main if you decide to stick with your main class. So to do this without burning yourself out, you want to do everything on auto as much as you can. And uh, all you have to do is press that start button and auto through all your alts. So this way you don't do the same thing over and over and get really bored. Personally, I only focus on two alts. That is my limit. My third alt, I still do the event dungeon, I still do the Ultraman dungeon, but I don't do anything else. Because after the first two alts, I start to hate the game. I just think that there's a limit that everyone gets to where they just get bored out of their mind. But there are so many mats that you really need in order to stay top of the top, top, the very best in this game. That you do need alts in order to do that. Uh, and it's a great way you should do it just auto your way through it and it's not that painful but if you have to keep up with three alts I find myself having difficulty doing that so don't force yourself to do three alts if you can't just get at least one alt and you'll be getting so many upgrade stones you'll be getting so many jewels you'll be getting free potions get at least one alt alright so I've been thinking I keep telling you to do three alts find the special perfect spot find out if you can do one alt or two alts or three alts do whichever one that actually increases your enjoyment of the game now if you don't care about all these resources and you can just buy them well that's fine but having the alts and leveling them to 50 and unlocking all the skills it will provide you a way to play the other characters and this way you know the type of skills that the other classes have and you'll be able to know the hitboxes knowing how to dodge and avoid the other uh, the other classes skills like when I was a mage I knew exactly what skills the mages are going to use and I can dodge their skills easier you will find out that people who have alts always PvP better than people without alts. It would also provide you a way to actually try different types of armors and different types of stats on your characters. For example, on my main mage, I actually use the PvP set and use PvP attack and PvP defense, which I think would be actually great in mass battles because you do need some defense in mass battles and the PvP attack and PvP defense will provide some survivability for my mage. Now you will only be able to get the PvP set from the Alliance shop from for your main most likely or you can do it but you will have to farm so many Alliance coins from team battles, from occupies, from major clashes that it, it takes so much time you would have to spend uh, several hours a day doing the alliance coins if you are going to do PvP set on an alt and I think that that may be that may not work so that's why I did the PvP set which I bought with alliance coins uh, on my mage for my assassin, I'm going to use penetration, some fixed damage, some hit. Uh, those are the stats that I will focus on for my assassin because obviously I don't have time to farm alliance coins on anything but my main character. For a gunner, 
it's possible that you can use cooldown reduction, some skill attack, just so that you can kite the enemy and uh, not get hit. The only problem I see with that is that it works good 1v1, but when there is a giant mob of people, you may not be able to dodge three people. I hope that everyone watches this whole entire video because what I am saying during the whole entire video or everything is important. It's uh, it may not be what you were thinking about. You may not have thought about this, but it's important when you're making these subs. So be sure to watch the whole video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the notification button and subscribe so that if there's another part of uh, how Italian works or there's another video that's come out you'll be notified and you can watch that as well Wow such beautiful eyes now the first thing you want to do is you want to log on to your characters is to donate 50,000 gold to your guild you don't want to do it later because you'll probably forget to so as soon as you log on, donate 50,000 gold because you'll have so much extra gold that you won't know what to do with it. You want to buy these guild coins with uh, the 50,000 gold because you can use those guild coins to buy shards. And you will go to the guild shop and you want to buy fairy shards, you want to buy ride shards because both ride mount shards and fairy shards can be transferred you don't want to buy the costume shards because the costume shards cannot be transferred it's only for that character and so if you buy costume shards it only fits on your alt so if you, if you have no time to do anything on your alt all you have to do i mean the least you can do is log on and you know donate to the guild buy some shards and then you can log off and go to your main so you can see how powerful it is you can start doing this at level probably about 30 ish when you join a guild and most guilds want you to donate max and if you donate 50,000 gold they'll most likely let you stay in that guild also something else that's very easy is to go to your friend list and to collect and send out uh, the friend points to everyone then you go to the very bottom and you start deleting people who haven't actually logged on for four days or three days because if they don't log on they won't be actually sending you points and then you go get new friends who are playing and they can send you points it, these points also can be transferred to uh, to shards, which is which is great. So you have even more pet shards and more ride shards to give to your main. Also, you want to do towers of tribulation, which is what we what I am autoing right now. And while we're autoing, we can go in and you know do some other things like check on our skills. You want to do the passive skill for EXP increase because you want to level up your alts high enough so that you can start doing higher level content and then get better stuff for your main. Be sure to do your relics and uh, alright so this Tower of Tribulation is done. Tower of Tribulation is something that is important because all your costumes require materials to uh, upgrade and uh, Towers of Tribulation is where you get those mats to upgrade costumes. These mats can be transferred to your main. We don't have time for me to climb the Tower of Tribulation at this moment but as you can see even the lowest levels have the mats for your costumes. The Ultraman Ace costume requires the blue thread and uh, you get more mats from Tower of Tribulation the higher level it is that you're doing. So you want to climb to the highest level that you can uh, that, that you can complete 
with an S rating or an A rating. And just do that one over and over so you can get your mats. Also, you want to do daily achievements. If you look on the daily achievements, there are ride shards and fairy shards. So try to do the ride shards and fairy shard daily achievements if you can. They're pretty easy. You usually just have to upgrade some things, sell some things, and uh, that is done. Then you can transfer those shards to your main. At the beginning, you will going to need upgrade stones for your alts. You don't want to give all your upgrade stones to your main right away. You can start to give your main the ride shards and uh, fairy shards because your alt only really needs one uh, mount and one costume, one fairy. So you can go ahead and give all of those to your main but you still need to farm upgrade stones for your alts so that they get stronger and they can farm more mats in the long run for your main. Now the golem guardians this is the dungeon where you get the most upgrade stones so you want to get your alt strong enough to at least do the second level of uh, the golem guardians and this way you'll have level 2 upgrade stones that you can give to your main. Also, Golem Guardian also gets you the fairy mats and also can get you fairy shards. So, Golem is very important to do. What I usually do is I just get to the second stage and then I auto uh, all 10 tickets of Golems right away. What you want to do with your rubies on an alt after you've pulled a few 11x's is not to do this. Don't <laughs> don't get growth material. Don't get the growth materials uh, with your rubies because what you'll get you get these costume shards that you can't give to your main. What you do want to do with your rubies is to get the intermediate enhanced stone bundle for 800 rubies that you can transfer to your main. You want to pull the 11x growth materials on your main account because then when you get costume shards it actually adds to the costumes that you already have on your main account. And costumes is the only thing that is really tough to get because you cannot transfer from your alts for costumes. So if you look here I'm transferring all these shards plus those blue flowers. Those blue flowers are used for fairies, for evolution on fairies. And you get all this from your alts. You get the flowers from Golem, from the Golem dungeon. And you can transfer them all to your main. And all of a sudden you'll have enough shards to, to do whatever you want. You'll have so many pets and mounts. You'll be all, all great, all ready to go. Uh, so once again, what I would usually do with my friendship points is to buy ride shards and uh, fairy shards. Now, you don't get that many, but after a while, they do add up. And you do need a ton, like 120 fairy shards for the final evolution. Now Now, if you have time to just press enter and auto the Cave of Ordeals, that is the EXP dungeon. Also, you want to do uh, the, the these dungeons. These dungeons give ride shards. So, it's very important to do those so that you can upgrade the, uh, the mounts that you have on your main account. Yeah, the story dungeons are important to do as well if you want to get ride shards. <coughs> now, you will want to go to your guild domain in order to buy potions. You can buy potions uh, a lot cheaper in your gold guild domain. What I normally do is to use my gold to buy potions because you get quite a bit of event potions. Uh, the good potions from event 
especially from this Ultraman event. I'm I'm pretty sure that whatever event comes after this probably will also give you some good potions for PvP. So I don't get the holy waters. I usually just get uh, the the regular potions that cost gold. And so you will also transfer these regular potions to your main account, which you will use on your main account for the times when you're farming uh, or doing anything that isn't PvP. You can just use the regular cheap potions, the cheap gold potions, and it'll save your main account so much gold. And that gold can be used to strengthen uh, your main account. Now normally you would spend an arm and a leg to buy jewels, but your alts get so many jewels and if you just transfer all your regular jewels, you cannot transfer the rainbow hexagonal jewels, but you can transfer all your regulars and you will have so many jewels that you will actually run out of gold that you won't have enough gold to fuse or to upgrade jewels with. Now my, uh, back on your main account, uh, you will start this process of retrieving all these mats and potions. And uh, I'll, I'll do some jewels upgrades and show you how I upgrade my jewels uh, to make them to make use of them and uh, because we do have limited gold we want to use our resources as best as possible now remember hexagonal jewels cannot be transferred between characters so hexagonal jewels are in my opinion the whale jewel so you have to spend real money in order to acquire uh, the rainbow hexagonal jewels in order to upgrade them because without having a ton of these hexagonal jewels you won't be able to enhance and level them up and staying at level one or two or three they are actually weaker than your regular jewels all right um, we are going to try to enhance some jewels I'm going to show you what I usually do in order to enhance jewels Let's see, we have uh, attack, PvP attack, critical, critical damage. We're going to do some regular attack. And the first five levels are guaranteed not to break your jewel. One thing about jewels is that you can actually break them. Once you've broken a jewel, the jewel cannot level up. So up to five, you can go ahead and use five other jewels to level up to five after five i do recommend you to use one jewel at a time maybe two jewels at a time some people tell me two jewels at a time i haven't been able to see how two jewels is actually better than using one jewel at a time i find that if i use like five or six jewels at a time it feels like every time i do that um i break it and the big time failure, just like that, is very bad. And only thing you can use with big time failures, you use those as a protection to prevent your other gems from breaking. So if you have a level 5 or level 6 gem that has failed, then you can use those to protect like a level 7 gem from failing. But it's, it's one time deal. And you'll start using up a lot of gems, which isn't that big of a deal because you have alts to funnel gems to your main. The big deal is is gold. You just won't have enough gold to uh, keep making gems. You have a very limited amount of gold. I've done a lot of testing and it seems that from 5 to 6 and 6 to 7, it's very easy to actually enhance you don't ever break between 5 to 6, 6 to 7. The rate of failure is pretty small. It might be like 50%. But once you get to plus 7, from plus 7 to 8 to 9 to 10 and higher, the 
the percentage is much smaller. I, I'm not sure what it is. I wish that I knew. But after you get to 7, from 7 to 8 to 8 to 9, 9 to 10, it feels like it's about 75% uh, failure. And after that, it feels like it's like a 90% failure. So you, if you want to, the safe way, the best thing to do is to get all your gems up to 7. And then later on, you can use the protections. You can use your failed ones to protect and level up your 7s to 8s or 8s to 9s or 9s to 10s. Now if you look at this, at the rates, you can see how the hexagonal gems are just not practical. You're going to need, I don't know, like 30 or 50 hexagonal gems in order to make a decent hexagonal gems. So this is something for uh, a big spender. Uh, you will do just fine using the regular gems if you are free to play. I've tried fusing gems and I've fused like 15, 20 gems just to get one hexagonal gem. So that it uses so much gold and weighs so many gems that it just isn't worth it. 20 gems for one hexagonal and if you need 50 hexagonals, that, that's, that's a, uh, like, what, 1,000 gems? That's impossible. All right, so here is what happens if you use five gems to enhance a gem that is over plus five. Big time fail, and it almost always big time fails. So I, I never use more than one gem when I am enhancing past level five. So, out of the green gems, I like to use skill attack, which is, I, I, I don't like any of the other health gems, drain gems, or uh, HP recovery. I don't think those are actually any useful in PvP. So, with a skill attack, it'll give you more burst, which is, which is great for mages. And I always enhance it one at a time, and I find that if you enhance one at a time, you have a decent chance of getting to plus seven, and then that plus eight is tougher, but it, it happens a lot. So if you just plus one, plus one, plus one after, uh, after plus five, you can get to plus eight rather easily. So I recommend to use one gem to enhance past level five, and maybe after, once you get to eight, be sure to use your broken gems, your failed gems, to uh, protect your next enhancement. Now out of the triangle defense gems, I like to use the defense penetration. So defend against penetration. I think that penetration is a very strong stat, and if you can defend against penetration, it's be best for PvP. I don't think it's that great for uh, PvE, but I've never had a problem with PvE using my PvP set, so I, I always go for uh, defense against penetration. So once again, at plus eight, I fail. So it's it's very easy to go to plus seven. On this next try, I also get to plus 7, but I also fail on plus 7. So, it's it's easy to get to 7. I would recommend to wait till plus 8 before protection. And then you can just use your gems to protect. Alright, so right now I'm going to show you how I enhance my gems. Well, also killing a dragon, which... Uh, which takes about 30 minutes every day and uh, the loot that you get from this dragon is not very good it's it's pretty bad for spending 30 minutes killing this dragon but I do take the time to kill 10 enemy uh, of the Bided Empire in order to fulfill my daily quest also there is a EXP scroll that you get for finishing this dragon so that's what I'm doing. Uh, now, in order to enhance this gem, you'll get it from 1 to 5. And then 
from that time on just use one gem to enhance it higher I, I don't protect them until it's about plus eight because it's pretty easy to get them to plus eight before you have to protect them all right plus seven now you see that you can't use failed plus six or plus five gems to protect it it has to be equal level gem or higher so if you have a plus seven gem in order to protect a plus seven gem you need to use a failed plus seven gem or a plus eight or plus nine but it's best to use a failed plus seven to enhance a plus seven you don't want to waste a plus eight failed on a plus seven gem it's much easier to make a plus seven fail than it is to make a plus eight fail so you want to stock up on these failed gems before you make this uh, make this run to plus 10 all right same issue I have to use a plus 8 failed gem in order to make it higher so in order to make these failed gems I usually just YOLO I can YOLO some plus 8 gems easily and then if there is one gem that you really need that is that you don't have but you really need then you can start using protections <clears throat> but you can YOLO a few gems in order to use those to stock them up for protecting uh, uh, another gem to guarantee that it gets to plus 10 okay all these fails are fine as long as it's not a, a big fail regular fails are just wonderful all right plus 10 there it goes and watch this once it hits plus 10 the rate just plummets once it gets to plus 10 I fail every time and I don't have any protection gems okay let's do it plus 10 plus 11 big time fail I mean the the chance once you hit plus 10 the chance for big time uh, fail goes up I, I don't have this isn't documented however in my experience at plus 10 the big time fail uh, goes up a lot thanks for watching uh, the second video of how Talion works let me know below when you, uh, please subscribe please comment below tell me what you liked about this video how I can improve I try to put as much content into every single minute that you're watching so that you can learn something new I try not to repeat any content now uh, on these gems you can get to plus 10 just by yellow and after plus 10 it's it becomes incredibly hard to get so like I said before, uh, just don't stress yourself. Get all plus 10 gems, plus 11 and higher. It's it's it'll stress you out. Don't don't worry about that. And at very last, um, I'll ask. Thank you for your subscribers. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll try to make a new video as soon as I can. Thank you. Look at that. I'm just about to fail. Almost. Almost. Fail. There. What are you? You're totally different. Sorry, bro. Didn't mean to kick your butt. What have you done? Are you on drugs? Wait. That's an Ultraman suit. That's not drugs. It's the power of Ultraman. I am Omniflash, and now I am Ultraman of another world.